Tell me exactly what happened. I was called in to see my superior. He had a teleprint in front of him and asked me if I'd ever been in action. I said I hadn't. Then he said, what I am telling you now must remain secret. There are two English flyers at Saarbrücken. They are to be shot on the orders of the Führer. I said that that couldn't be right, to shoot unarmed officers. He replied, you are acting on my orders and will follow my instructions. The officers were Roger Bushell and Bernard Scheidar. We drove for some distance, then the driver was ordered to stop. We got out and told the prisoners they should get out and stretch their legs, as we had a long way to go. I was standing near the car, just behind the English flyer. I would say I was about five meters away from him. My fellow officer was standing just behind the other man, the Frenchman. We raised our pistols together and we both fired. He just crumpled up and fell on his right side. As I walked near him, I could see there was still movement, so I put my gun near his temple and fired again. He died immediately. I knew that what I had been ordered to do was wrong. I said so and was told to get on with it. What else could I do? If I had not done it, someone else would have done it. If we had all refused, we would all have been shot. But I have always expected to answer for this. This deed I never wished to do. And now it is the end of the road. By March the 30th, Six days after the escape, Roger Bushell and 21 of his men were dead. Many more were in German custody. But a handful remained on the run. Dennis Cochran had gone to ground for a while merging with a gang of foreign workers, street sweeping in Frankfurt before moving on again. Now he was 550 miles from the camp and near his journey's end. Switzerland and freedom lay just across the Rhine. put his head round the corner and said, um, uh, Aufsteig, Aufsteig, come. I said, get up, get up, come with me. I said, why? He said, you'll find out. Well, at the bottom of the stairs, there was a, a couple of square-shouldered Gestapo types. One of them produced a 
revolver and said, Mox, you kind of dumb hide. Don't do anything stupid. We drove out of Berlin, came to a dark wood, and out of the dark wood rose up a big ball with an electric wire on top of it. And uh, I, I reckon this was, was guard towers. I reckon this was my destination. I wasn't far wrong. The SS officer in front told me to get out. He said, oh, here, James. He said, um, uh, this is a, a nice place. He said, you will not escape from here. Marched down to the end hut, where I came um, face to face with Wings Day, where Wing Commander Day had been a senior British officer. Oh, I said, hello, sir. Are we, uh, where am I? It's just cold. It's. And he said, no, I wish the hell it was. But uh, the only way out of here is up the chimney. It's Saxon, Sachsenhausen concentration camp. Dennis Cochran nearly made it all the way. But he was arrested right on the Swiss frontier, within sight of freedom. It's almost certain that it was his forged pass that finally gave him away. The Germans had changed the layout of all official passes in an attempt to catch the escapers. the Reichsführer SS has ordered that the British Airman Cochrane will be taken over by officials of your office and during transport in the direction Breslau will be shot whilst trying to escape. The shooting will be done in such a way that the prisoner concerned will be unaware of what is going to happen. Signed, Muller, Lieutenant General of Police. Durach, I think, was the last place he was picked up, which is a long way. You see, seven nights he was away from the camp. Seven days, seven nights. I want to know what his life was like at that time. I never shall. Dennis had been shot twice, once in the back of the head and again after he collapsed in the back of the heart. His body was taken to a nearby concentration camp and burned. I think Bill Jennings called everybody to attention. We all stood up briefly, and Massey came forward and said, uh, and he was obviously deeply moved. He said, I was called to the Commandant's office this morning, where he gave me the awful news that of the 76 officers who went out of the tunnel, four have been killed. The 
the senior officer was told this, his immediate reaction was how many were wounded. And after certain denials, the Germans admitted that none were wounded, they were all killed. And then a few days later, a list appeared. By this time, the number had gone up from 44 or 45 to 50. They are not around this notice board all day long. There are people going up and reading it again. They're not, not believing this could be true, really. 